holy. You're holy, holy, Lord, you're holy. You're holy, 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 God. We want to see you. That is our prayer this morning. Lord, that you would open the very eyes of our hearts so that we can see you, see you in your fullness, see you in your glory. Lord, we want to see you. That is our topic in prayer this morning is open the eyes of my heart, Lord. For those of you uh, that are joining this morning, I wanna welcome you to our Tuesday morning power prayer call where we start our Tuesday mornings with power. On this past Sunday, uh, we looked at a text in the book of 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. And in this text, the prophet Elisha prayed a very simple, sincere prayer that he asked the Lord to open the servant's eyes so that he would be able to see. You know, that's the prayer that we have to pray. We have to ask God to open our eyes so that we can see, so that we can see with our spiritual eyes, so that we can see through the eyes of faith. And we know that we walk by faith and not by sight. And this is just so important because we do have natural eyes and there's things that we see in this life. There's things that we see that become distractions. And it, it's not saying that those things are not real. We're not, it's not saying that those things that we see and those things that we experience are not big and great situations. But when we ask God to open the eyes of our heart so that we can see things through a God perspective, we begin to see that regardless of what we see naturally, when we look at it spiritually, our God is greater. See, Elijah was praying and asking for the servant to be able to see. The question this morning is, how should we look at what we see? Well, the Apostle Paul really wants to make this plain for us because he wants us to be able to understand that what we see with our natural eyes versus what can not be seen with our spiritual eyes. Therefore, what we have to see with our spiritual eyes that often our natural eyes cannot see. If you turn with me this morning to the book of 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 18, that's 1 Corinthians 4 and 18, here's what the word of God says. It says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, they're temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. See, this is just such an important reminder because whatever it is that you're seeing in your life right now, whatever it is that you see when you click on uh, the seven o'clock news, the evening news, whatever it is that you're reading in the newspaper and on your apps, those things are temporary. <laughs> it, it cannot last. But the things that we see with our spiritual eyes, the things of God, God's promises, God's word, those things that we see are eternal. And so it's not that we shouldn't pay attention to those things we see around us that are happening or to anything that has occurred in our lives. But here becomes the issue is that we often begin to see those things and we scrutinize on those things and that's all that we're able to see. See, it's when we only look at life circumstances and life situations with carnal and natural eyes, it causes us to become blind. <laughs> oh, we see, but we're blind because we become spiritually blind. See, when this thing happens, we tend to lose vision. We tend to lose God-given vision and we lose perspective. 
And this is so dangerous because having a God perspective on the situations in our lives and the things that we see can be the very difference between panic and peace, <laughs> defeat and victory and confusion and clarity. See, when we get a God perspective on something, even in the natural, when we get the phone call, we receive the report, we're reading the letter, we got the notice, if we only see it with our natural eye, we'll read those words, we'll get those messages and think that it's over. But when we see it from a God perspective, even when it's hard news to receive, we will still have peace. Again, I'm going back to the prophet Elijah. He understood this. Second Kings 6, verses 15 through 17. We looked at this on Sunday, but if you can go there with me again or mark it to take a look at it a later, Second Kings 6, 15 through 17 says, when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning. <laughs> Sometimes it's so early in the morning, we still got sleep in our eyes. Mm. Y'all wear glasses. And most of the time that you see me, I have on contacts, but often first thing in the morning, when I wake up, if I'm trying to see the clock and I'm trying to see something first thing when it's still early and I haven't put in contacts or I haven't quite put my glasses on in the earliness of the morning, I have to squint. <laughs> uh, I have to blink a few times for my eyes to truly open up so that I can see. And so early in that morning when he went out the servant there with an army with horses and chariots that had surrounded the city. And because he did not have a God perspective, a spiritual point of view, he could only see this with his natural eye. He panicked and he said, oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? And the prophet answered, oh, don't be afraid because those who are with us are more than are with them. But then Elijah prayed, he said, open his eyes, Lord, so that he might see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes. See here, Elijah was able to see what the servant was unable to see. Though unseen to the naked eye, it still exists. I need you to know that even though your naked eye cannot see it, your faith is real. See, our faith allows us to see the invisible and the impossible, the difficult, the unpredicted. Our faith will allow us to see those things. And so when we find ourselves unable to see God in the problem, but not only, but we're only able to see the problem, we've got to pray, Lord, open my eyes eyes so that I can see. See, if we allow the Lord to open our eyes, what I'm talking about today is the eyes of our heart. Let me say it this way, the eyes of our understanding. And you know, there's some stuff that happens in our life that we just don't understand. I know many of you uh, grew up hearing this song and singing this song like I did too. The song says, we'll understand it better by and by. And sometimes we just got to say, Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. Lord, help me to see this the way that you see it, because God's ways are not our ways. God's faults are not our faults. Again, the Apostle Paul wanted us to understand this. And he spoke this truth to the church at Ephesus as he prayed for them. In Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, here's what the word says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. See, when we ask God to open the eyes of our understanding, we get revelation. What do I mean by that? We get understanding. We get a word from God. Uh, God, God begins to deposit understanding into our spirit. Things begin to make sense for us. Things begin to become clear for us. We get clarity on the situation. And, and when we get revelation from God, here's what Paul says, is so that we may know God better. See, if we're saying that God's ways are not our ways and God's thoughts are not our thoughts, if we're going to have a God perspective on our problems, on our life situations, then we've got to understand God. And if we understand God, then we'll understand the way God thinks. And how do we get to the point of understanding God? Well, we've got to read God's word. Because God tells us about God's character, about God's love, about God's ways in God's word. And so Paul goes on to say, 
in verse 18, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you. <laughs> Oh, uh, see, when we have problems in life, the enemy is trying to steal our faith. The enemy is trying to steal our hope based on what we see. But when we ask God to open the eyes of our heart, we will begin to have hope. <laughs> Everything can be crumbling around us. All the things that we expected to happen may not have happened. Those things we thought would not happen may have happened, but yet we will still have hope. And then Paul goes on to say the riches of his glorious inheritance in his, in his holy people and his uncomparable great power for all of us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength. See, when we get a God perspective, when we get our eyes open, the eyes of our heart, the eyes of our understanding, we remember that great and mighty is our God. <laughs> we remember that our God is all powerful. We remember that our God is greater. We will be able to sing how great is our God. We'll be able to say that our God is all knowing. Our God has all wisdom. And if we ask our God, our God will show us those very things. We will be able to look at our problem and say, yes, this problem is is, but my God is too. My God is greater and my God is bigger. If I could break down what Paul said to you in just simpler terms, he was saying, I pray that the eyes of your heart he says the very center core of your being. See, the eyes of your heart is the, 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 the soul of who you are, the things that make up you, the things that you're praying for and you're believing for may be enlightened with the light of Holy Spirit. And that scripture, we break it down just a couple ways. If I could break it down for you this morning, Paul really, when he talks about the opening the eyes of our heart, he breaks this down in three ways. The first thing he says is the hope of God's calling, that you may know the hope of God's calling. Do you know the hope of God's calling? See, when the eyes of our hearts are open and we allow God to shine within us, when we allow the God light to allow us to see situations the way that God sees them, we will begin to truly understand the greatness of God. We'll begin to understand the great power of God that works within us. See, our hope speaks of what is to come. See, the thing about our amazing hope is our problem was to remind us of our past. Our problem was to remind us of what's happened before, but our hope reminds us of our great future. Here's the other thing is that our hope speaks of our heavenly state. Hear me out. Our hope speaks of what is to come. Our hope speaks about the glory that will be in us as it is revealed through us. It speaks about what is to come. It, it gives us light to remember that in the moment, our momentary struggles, our suffering and pain right now, the situation that we're going through right now, it does not outweigh the eternal glory that we have through Jesus Christ. Here's a part two of Paul's prayer and opening the eyes of our heart. He wants us to see God's glorious inheritance in us. I just want to remind you this morning that God loves you. Let me say it to you one more time. God loves you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me because the Bible tells me so. See, we are so precious to God. Do you fully understand how precious you are to God? How much God loves you? See, when we ask God to open the eyes of our hearts, we can begin to understand how much we are loved by God, how much God has in store for us. And most importantly, in the heavenly realm, we will come to understand who we are in God. God's great love for us, God's great love towards us that was demonstrated in Jesus Christ. Y'all, we got a great inheritance. We got promises of God. Y'all, Jesus is coming back for us to take us to a prepared place. And we cannot let the problems of life cause us to believe that God does not care. That goes into part three of Paul's prayer for us in opening the eyes of our hearts is that we would understand the greatness of God's power in us. Ephesians 3 and 20 tells us that God is 
able. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. You, you've got great power of God in you. But often our problems and what we see with our natural eye causes us to underestimate the power of God. When we look at our own circumstances and decide that they are too great to be overcome, we underestimate the great power of God in us. See, what we fail to understand is that the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is available to us. Y'all, we have resurrection power on our lives. We have incomparable great power that is available to all that believe. The word of God says this, is that the power is the same as the mighty strength that was exerted when God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him on the right hand in heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion in every name in this present age and is to come falls under the authority of that God. When we do not allow God to open our hearts, we will begin to lose sight of who God is and what God is able to do, and we will lose sight of who we are in God. And so what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that we've got to be willing to ask God to open the eyes of our hearts, and we do that through prayer. See, when we pray, we get a God perspective, we get we were able to see things from the heavenly realm because when we pray, we invite heaven into our situations. See, Jesus did everything he did on earth with a heavenly perspective. And Jesus even taught us to pray with a heavenly mindset. If you go to Matthew 6 and 10, we see the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, when we are born again in Christ, we are no longer just earthly beings trying to get into heaven. Hear this, we are heavenly beings living here on earth. And so therefore we have to call the things of heaven on earth. What are the things of heaven? Well, in heaven, there is no sickness or disease. And so today, if you're looking at your problem and your problem is in your health, it's in your body, you got to begin to call those things that are in heaven on earth. You got to say today, I am healed on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, what are the things of heaven? We know that our father is rich. We know that he owns a thousand, he owns a cattle and a thousand hills. We know that our father has a land filled with milk and honey. We know that our father has streets paved with gold prepared for us in heaven. So we've got to begin to declare on earth that we are debt free, that we are the lender and not the borrower. We got to begin to claim even in our finances, the things of heaven on earth. We know that in heaven, there is no depression. There is no oppression. There is no anxiety. So we've got to claim on earth that we've got a sound mind. We've got to claim on earth as it is in heaven. We've got to say, Lord, guard my heart and mind. Lord, help me to think on things that are pure and lovely and of good report. We've got to begin to call down the things of heaven. See, when we get a God perspective on the situations in our lives, we will remember that through Jesus Christ, we have access to the supernatural, the supernatural dimension. We have miracles available to us, and we simply got to ask God to open the eyes of our heart so that we don't see these situations as our demise. We don't see these situations as a setback, but a setup. We don't see them as, uh, as something that was meant to destroy us, but something that was came so that God could get the glory in us 
and through us in our lives. And so if we are going to have the eyes of our hearts open, we are going to have to pray. And so that's what we come to do this morning. We've come to pray. And so whatever it is that's going on in your life today, whatever situation that you found yourself like the servant, that you've gone out there and you've seen it and it's overwhelmed you, it's scared you, it's caused you to have great fear. You're tossing and turning. It's tormenting you. You don't know which way to go. You don't know what to do. It's that thing that's challenging your faith. Today, we're going to pray and I want you to ask God to open the eyes of your heart to give you understanding and a God perspective specifically on that situation. God will get the glory from everything in our lives if we'll let God. If we would begin to trust that the God who brought us to it will bring us through it, we will begin to see things the way that God sees it and know that no matter what, we win and we have the victory. So we're gonna get ready to pray, but I'm gonna pause for just about 10 seconds. And I want you to just go ahead and speak out loud. Take the power away from that thing. When the servant went out there, he saw them surrounded by chariots and horses. But after Elijah prayed for him, he saw Elijah surrounded by fire. He was able to see that the very trap that the enemy had set up for him, for Elijah and for the people of Israel, that God was already surrounding them with angels of grace and mercy and protection. And if today you would pray and ask God to give you a godly perspective, something that you've looked at with your natural eye, you're going to look at it again and you're going to see God all up in the situation. So I'm going to pause and you name that thing and then we're going to pray that God would allow you to see it the way God does. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. God, we want to see you. Lord, we come today thanking you for the privilege and the honor to be able to come to you in prayer. Lord, we thank you that what a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege it is to carry everything to you, God, in prayer. God, we come to you today and we're asking that you would do spiritual surgery on our eyes today, God. Lord, we need you to help us to get a God vision, a God perspective on the circumstances of our lives. God, we've looked at our lives and our problems and our situations and our circumstances, and they've terrified us. They've frightened us, God. They've moved us to great panic, Lord. Lord, we ask forgiveness because we've seen things with our natural eyes that have caused us to begin to doubt you and your great power. But Lord, we come today acknowledging that you are the God above all. God, you are the great God. You have been given the name above everything. We come acknowledging today, great and mighty are you, God. You are powerful, God. <laughs> you have never lost the battle, God. Lord, you continue to make a way out of no way, God. We thank you, God, that you move mountains on our behalf, God, that you part water so that we can walk on dry ground, God. You provide for us. You protect us, God. There is nothing too difficult difficult for you, God. So we come acknowledging that you are the great and mighty God. Lord, we come acknowledging your power today. And so Lord, we're asking that you would open up the eyes of our heart. God, we're asking that you would give us understanding and clarity around situations that have caused confusion in our lives. God, there's things that we're going through that we don't understand. But Lord, 
You never promised that we wouldn't experience trouble. Lord Jesus even said that in this world, there would be great trouble, but that you already overcame the world. So it doesn't matter what problem has shown up. It doesn't matter early in the morning what we see. Lord, you have already overcome it. And Lord, because of the resurrection power that raised you from the dead, that same power is on our lives, God, and we can overcome every situation. God, we want to see you. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you, God, greater than our situations. We want to see us in you, God. God, help us to see us ourselves the way that you see us, fearfully and wonderfully made, conquerors, overcomers, God, healed, delivered, whole, set free, God. Help us to see ourselves the way that you see us, God. Lord, help us to get a God perspective on ourselves. Help us to not underestimate your power and your power that is at work within us. Oh, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. And help us to know today, God, that you are in everything in every situation the same way that the servant saw them surrounded but after elijah prayed for him he saw elijah surrounded by fire and so i thank you god that we are surrounded we are surrounded by angels all day and all night looking out after us we are surrounded by grace and mercy they are our constant companions we thank you that your mercies are new every single day god we thank you that we're surrounded and are going out and are coming in. We thank you that we're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the field. We thank you that we're blessed at home and we're blessed at work. We're blessed in our ministry and we're blessed in our hobbies. We're blessed in our marriages and we're blessed in our finances. We're blessed in our relationships, God. We thank you that in every area of your, our lives, if it concerns us, God, it concerns you. And so we no longer look and our problems is great, but we look at our problems today and we declare that our God is greater, greater. And so right now, the very scales are falling off of our eyes of confusion and distraction and defeat. And as we open our eyes, we see the glory, the glory of God shining on us and through us and every situation in our lives, I declare right now that our great God will get the glory. And so we give you praise, glory, and honor, God, that the victory is won. <laughs> the fight is fixed. <laughs> and no matter how great it is, God, we declare that you are greater it's in the strong, mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. We've got to set our mind on things above and not on the earth. If we're going to win the battle, if we're going to have a godly perspective, if we're going to keep a godly perspective, y'all, we've got to set our eyes on the things that are pure and lovely and of good report. We've got to believe today you are blessed with every spiritual blessing and the heavenly places of Christ. We have been given the king, keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so today I bind sickness, germs, and disease. I bind any thing that is trying to distract us, I bind it right now and I lose healing, transformation, deliverance, freedom, wholeness on earth as it is in heaven today in the name of Jesus. So go into this day asking God to open the eyes of your heart to give you clarity and understanding. We've already prayed it. You know what? We don't even have to ask it. I pause because I need to stop. We've already asked. So we thank you, God, that our eyes have been opened and we go into this day with a God perspective, trusting you 
and everything that we see. I love you. God bless you. Have an amazing day seeing things the way God sees them. Mm -hmm.